Hey everyone, me Kevin here. In this video, I'm going to do a complete breakdown of the New York Times articles and reports on Donald Trump's tax returns. And I'm going to provide insights as a business person with an accounting background wherever I can. I'm not going to take a position, left, right, center, right, wrong. I'm just a dude on YouTube who's going to break down what was said, where the loopholes are or might be, and where potential problems might be. So if this stresses you out, well then you could get life insurance in as little as five minutes via the link down below, which you could Apple Pay or Android Pay for. And if it doesn't stress you out, then remember you could still get two free stocks with Webull using the link down below. You deposit $100, you get two free stocks worth up to $1,600. Okay, here we go. What we're going to do is we're going to go through a flow chart of everything organized. So we have an easy way to understand exactly what's going on. And that way you can make your own opinions based on this information. Keep in mind, this is information coming from the New York Times. So if you don't like the New York Times or you don't believe the New York Times, maybe you don't want to see this information. The New York Times says they've collected over thousands of records to corroborate the information that they're providing. And so this is just a summary of that. Of course, I will link their articles down below so you could see it directly at the source. Although just so you know, this spreadsheet that I'm or this flow chart I'm about to show you took me somewhere around seven hours to put together. So if you like condensed, here you go. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's start with income per year, and then we'll go into hotels and deductions and write-offs and how to hide some of this income and some of the issues that uh, potentially come up. So income first, or sort of what was reported on tax returns. In 1995, we have income of a, actually a loss of $915.7 million. Between 2000 and 2017, Donald Trump apparently paid the alternative minimum tax for seven years, and this tax totaled $24.3 million. Between 2002 and 2017, Trump apparently paid $0 in taxes in 10 years out of those 15 years. Between 2005 and 2007, this was during the apprentice time, Donald Trump paid about $70.1 million in taxes. The apprentice deal itself was around $120 million in pure profit, but that also led to a flood of other income streams, which you'll see in just a moment. In 2007, Donald Trump paid $13.3 million in taxes. In 2008, zero taxes owed. In 2009, things get interesting. In 2009, returns were filed requesting refunds from the IRS with losses of over $700 million. These were presumed to be the Atlantic City casinos uh, that failed. See, on that day, on the same day that Donald Trump filed these taxes, apparently, he also notified the Security and Exchange Commission that he had, quote, and this quote is very important, determined that his partnership interests are worthless and lack potential to regain value, hereby abandoning his stake. And the New York Times says this was crucial because if the IRS says that if you abandon a business, you can write off all of the losses that you have invested into that business on your tax return. That's how you could take this big deduction. But if you get more than, I think it's like $3,000 or something like that in profits in the future, you can't say you abandoned that project anymore and take those losses. But it appears, and this is what's up in the air, that it's possible Donald Trump retained about 5% in stock, which would technically eliminate his 2009 ability to take a loss. And this is the subject of a big IRS tax audit that's been going on for years. If Donald Trump loses the tax audit, it could cost him around $100 million. And part of this was due to the opening of what was, what's known as the Obama loophole. And this loophole allows basically taking losses more than two years back. There was some kind of doubling of these loss rules that opened up the opportunity for Trump to take this during the recession. Uh, it's also possible and alleged by the New York Times that Donald Trump put the money together to fund these deals with cash he secretly got from his father. And they say secretly got because if you get over a certain amount of millions of dollars from a parent, you're supposed to pay estate taxes or gift taxes, and those can be very expensive. However, if they were somehow funneled into these properties and then Donald Trump took big losses on them by abandoning his stake in them, then it's possible he was able to avoid the estate taxes. And, and that's where some say that's questionable whether or not that's legal. 
to avoid estate taxes. And then also using this loophole was that legal to take these big losses. These big losses led in 2010 to Donald Trump taking a $72.9 million tax refund. 70 million of that was a principal and then he got 2.7 million in interest. He also received another $21 million in state and local tax refunds. Because of this big loss and after getting this refund, he was able to pay zero taxes in 2011, 12, 13, 14. And in 2015, he paid $641,000 in taxes. And in 2016, he paid just $750 in federal income taxes. And again, this is all allegedly from the New York Times. Trump's response, and then I'm, I wanna get particularly, this is gonna be fun, we're gonna get into Trump's income streams here, which you're gonna see some really in, uh, interesting things here. But in fairness, I do just quickly wanna mention Trump's response. His response to the New York Times articles has been most, if not all of the facts appear to be inaccurate. Uh, in 2016, he told the Associated Press that there's nothing to learn from his tax returns. And once he's out of the routine audit, he'll release his tax, re tax returns. He says the stories are fake. This is what he's recently said, that this is a fake story. This is what he said on Monday at his press conference. Uh, his staff has said that over the past decade, President Trump has paid tens of millions of dollars in personal taxes to the federal government, including paying millions in personal taxes since announcing his candidacy in 2015. The New York Times rebuts this and says that he might be talking about Social Security, Medicare, and uh, taxes for his household employees, and not necessarily the federal taxes, because federal taxes are just one part of the taxes you pay. Okay, so this is where things get a little juicy and kind of fun. So before The Apprentice, Donald Trump apparently made $500,000 from pitching the Big and Tasty Burgers. After The Apprentice, which during The Apprentice, they say that Donald Trump basically profited around $427.4 million. And here's some of the ways he profited. He pitched double stuffed Oreos. I personally, I think those were the yellow kinds. I kind of remember those in the stores. Uh, but anyway, he got $500,000 for pitching double stuffed Oreos, $500,000 for pitching Domino's, $850,000 plus 250K for pitching all laundry detergent. He said that this was what his mother used. 8.7 million for pitching ACN. This is a uh, multi-level marketing company. 15 million for pitching mattresses. 11 different ad campaigns and speaking gigs. 15 million came from Trump neckties, shirts, and underwear. $100,000 from Warner Music for licensing ringtones of Donald Trump saying things like, you're getting a phone call, and believe me, it better be important. I have no time for small talk, and neither do you. $300,000 in a Dayton, Ohio speech. Uh, attendees apparently paid $2,995 to learn the secrets of instant wealth for uh, this seminar. So I guess this would be a seminar, not really a speech. $7.3 million for speaking events like Real Estate Wealth Expo. One weekend can make you a millionaire. $2.6 million selling a vitamin bottle. Haircuts for The Apprentice, they wrote off as expenses $70,000 to style Trump's hair during The Apprentice, $96,000 for hair and makeup for Ivanka Trump during The Apprentice. Those were write-offs. The other items there were incomes. Uh, one of the producers apparently in 2018 was quoted saying, we walked through the offices and saw chipped furniture. We saw a crumbling empire at every turn. Our job was to make it seem otherwise. Uh, then we've got uh, the show revenue declining in later years as the show kind of came to an end. 51 million in 2011, 21 million by 2014, 3 million by 2018. And uh, after The Apprentice ended and sort of these revenues started ending or, or declining, Trump started selling stocks and bonds uh, from his portfolio. He sold 98 million in 14, 54 million in 15. Gosh, imagine if he had held those stocks and bonds now. Anyway, 68.2 million in 16. And in July 2020, he had less than apparently $1 million worth of stocks and bonds to sell. Uh, now we're going to jump on over to the hotels and uh, and some other source of, uh, sources of his income. So the hotels are really important. The New York Times claims that Donald Trump has made about $73 million from uh, sources from abroad sources or, or people going to the hotels and clubs from abroad. And uh, what's really important is the New York Times says that a lot of the money that's coming in from these are from lobbyists, foreign officials, or others basically seeking FaceTime. Now, I don't, I think my iPad capitalized FaceTime there, but basically like you become a member at the golf course, you're more likely to meet Trump or be associated with Trump and maybe that can help you with your business kind of thing. 
That's kind of what, uh, you know, the New York Times here is alleging. Now, this is important. There's a lot of talk going on about expenses and the New York Times is suggesting that they've noticed a large jump in general and administration expenses at some of the hotels and golf courses. The thing about tax returns, and this is really important to know, is that in tax returns, if you have general and administration expenses, you do not have to itemize what those are. And so part of the media is saying, see, there's no link that there's any spending to Russia or Stormy Daniels coming out of Trump's uh, organization. But the New York Times is saying, well, we don't know all we know is that for some reason, there's a big jump in general ad in administration expenses at some of these resorts and hotels, uh, but we, we don't see what's actually within those expenses because they're not itemized. They're not required to be itemized. So uh, there are suspicions that Russia spending or sort of other kind of more hidden spending, the Stormy Daniels write-offs, things like that, could be potentially buried in the GNA expenses. See, for example, the New York Times says that GNA expenses at Donald Trump's Bed Miss Minster Golf Club in New Jersey increased fivefold from 2016 to 2017. And the New York Times is basically saying here, like, why would your general and administration expenses 5x in, in one year at, uh, at a golf course. Like maybe if you had a maintenance expense, but that's a different line item, right? Or a renovation, but that's a different line item. So that's, that's where the New York Times is kind of like, oh, what's going on here? I, I don't know. Now, Donald Trump, uh, the New York Times quoted Donald Trump's book from uh, The Art of the Deal. And they said that Donald Trump says, I play to people's fantasies. People want to believe that something is the biggest and the greatest and the most spectacular. I call it truthful, hyperbole. It's an innocent form of exaggeration and it's a very effective form of promotion. <laughs> Sounds very familiar to, uh, to a particular real estate syndicator that, uh, that, that lives by this mantra who will go unnamed here. He's got a lawsuit we got to talk about too at some point. But anyway, if uh, Trump is the product, the New York Times says this, if Trump becomes the product then in theory, anything that feeds off the Trump brand can be written off. So the New York Times says he can live a life of wealth, but show losses. That's why maybe he could write off his clothes or his haircuts or his hairstyling or Trump's makeup or Ivanka Trump's makeup, because, well, that's all part of the brand, part of the image. That's the argument, right? IRS to, to be determined stuff, right? Okay, let's get into some of the uh, hotels here and some of the things that we'll see or, or golf resorts. So. Mar-a-Lago saw a sudden flood of new members, allowing Trump to pocket an additional $5 million in a year. Mar-a-Lago had a tenfold rise in cash from initiation fees from $664,000 to $6 million in 2016. Massive membership rush after Trump became president, uh, after his political ascent. We've got some write-offs here on linens and silver for 109,000, 197,000 landscaping, Trump photographer 210k. At the Doral Golf Resort, we see uh, you know special interests like a manufacturer here uh, investing 1.5 million. The New York Times really makes sure to say that Trump invested a lot of money, but that the resorts show losses. So, uh, for example, at Doral, uh, they say Trump invested 213 million which he bought the place for 150 million and then invested money into it, but uh, ended up getting losses or accruing losses of 162 million over the next six years. And he's got a $125 million loan coming due in three years. The Washington Hotel shows losses of 55.5 million. And these, this hotel, both the Washington Hotel and Dural Golf Resort saw, quote, a credit card transactions rise markedly with Trump's political ascent, possibly due to what they call influence trading. FaceTime over there again, right? Uh, we've got historical credit. So because Trump renovated this old post office and turned it into a hotel, he got about a $9.7 million historical preservation tax credit. You can pause on some of these. I'm not gonna read all of these, but I'll read some of them. For example, in Scotland and Ireland, Trump invested apparently 144 mil, shows losses of 63 mil. He gets a lot of licensing money. So from India, for example, he got a couple million in licensing, Philippines money in licensing. The New York Times mentioned that after this 
licensing deal. This uh, the Philippines leader chose the man behind Trump Tower Manila to be a special envoy, a trade envoy to Washington. So you kind of see the sort of trading of, of roles and responsibilities after Trump's ascent. Uh, for example, the New York Times also says that when Turkish US relations were poor, poor, like things weren't going well between Turkey and the US, a Turkish business group canceled a conference at Trump's Washington hotel. Six months later, things got better and oh, they had uh, they had their rescheduled business conference. Turkish Airlines apparently also had an event at uh, one of Trump's properties. Uh, Trump Tower is apparently Trump's most profitable, makes about 20 million per year in profit. It's profited around 336 million since 2000. So apparently some years less here, but around 20 per year. His office buildings in New York, presumably like 40 Wall Street, do very, very well. Uh, about 176 million in profit here. And uh, after Trump's ascent politically, they noticed that rental rates went up substantially at 40 Wall Street as well. Uh, then this is a big thing that keeps coming up, the consulting fees. So let's clarify this. There were a few deals that, uh, quite a few deals where Trump basically took $5 million in revenue, like in this Azerbaijan deal. And uh, I hope I didn't butcher that, but I tried my best. Uh, this Dubai deal made $3 million in income. And uh, then we've got consulting fees. So these are expenses of about 1.1 million and 630,000. And in another event, 747,000 for, for a different property. That was for Vancouver and Hawaii. And a lot of people are wondering, well, wait a minute, who's doing the consulting for Donald Trump? Well, apparently this 747,000 for the consulting fees that were spent match exactly what Ivanka Trump reported receiving in that particular year of the Vancouver, Vancouver and Hawaii deal. And the New York Times says nobody else is known to be a consultant other than Donald Trump's children. So let's come over here and just do a quick explanation of what this might look like. Let's say that Donald Trump has, uh, I don't know, let's go with $50 million in, uh, we'll call this net worth sitting in a bank account somewhere. Donald Trump says that. Now let's say Donald Trump makes another $1 million in income. Well, Donald Trump's gonna have to pay taxes on that, or supposed to pay taxes, right? Subject to business write-offs and that. And that would leave him with, let's say, half of that. So let's go ahead and say he's left with another 500K in extra net worth in this example. That means he has 50.5 million in net worth. And these are just made up numbers as an example here. But instead of him taking that extra net worth, what if he just gives it to his children as a business write-off? And why would he do that? Well, because if Donald Trump passes away, he has to pay something called an estate tax. So on that 500,000, along with that additional 50 million in this example here, he'll have to pay a, a substantial estate tax, which depending on the state you're in, can be 20 to 40 to 50% sometimes over a certain amount of money, usually over 12 to somewhere around $23 million, you pay estate taxes. And so instead, or as a way to sort of avoid the estate tax, Donald Trump could say, okay, well, if I make an extra million dollars, why don't I just instead of taking the 1 million, say I had a write-off of $1 million as a consulting fee. So I'm gonna pay a consultant a million dollars. So that kind of wipes out the taxes Trump would have to pay. Ivanka Trump is going to take the $1 million. She's gonna pay income taxes on that. So in fairness, Ivanka Trump is paying income taxes on the 1 million, just like Trump would, but they've just bypassed the estate tax, which would have created a double tax because see, Donald Trump gets income that gets taxed once. So that's tax number, uh, number one, we'll say tax number one. But then when he passes away, he gets taxed again via the estate tax. By giving money or writing off an expense to Ivanka as a consultant, he avoids the estate tax. That's my understanding of what's going on with this whole consulting thing. So hopefully that helps. Now using the actual real numbers here, this is contentious, you know, the $747,000 in consulting fees, because again, it allows Ivanka Trump to pay taxes on it and avoid the estate tax, but it also avoids certain payroll taxes. And technically you're not supposed to be both an employee 
and a contractor. And so the different children apparently have different LLCs to make it seem like it's a different consulting company and they're called companies like TTT Consulting or TTTT Consulting and these apparently are for each of the different siblings. They each have a different sort of variation of, of T's and consulting firms. Now, this is just what the New York Times alleges so, so we don't know exactly. And prior to the election, each sibling took a salary of $480,000 Afterwards, they're each, uh, or Eric and Don Jr. are taking two million, and Ivanka, I don't believe, does because she's at the White House. By the way, in addition to this, there's also talk that the Miss Universe pageant made Donald Trump a few million dollars, but that somebody who basically set up the Miss Universe pageant with Donald Trump is somehow connected to an attorney who works for the Kremlin in Russia, and so there's this weird Miss Universe connection going on as well. Uh, going back to some of these figures though here, according to the New York Times, the Trump Corporation lost $134 million since 2000. Trump says he loves depreciation, but the New York Times says even before depreciation, Doral, Washington, three European golf courses, and the Trump Corporation in total lost $150.3 million between 2010 and 2018, not including depreciation expenses. Loan losses. Uh, the New York Times alleges that Trump has failed to pay $287 million in loans since 2010. And within the next four years from today, about more than $300 million in loans, which he is personally responsible for, will come due. Nancy Pelosi wants to know to whom that's owed, casting doubt that maybe somebody would have this obligation over Trump or leverage over Trump and that could affect the presidency, that that is uh, a national security control. Donald Trump rebuts this and says, well, my debt is very little relative to the value of the assets, uh, which then, then other people argue, but were some of the values of the assets inflated? Did they lose money during the pandemic because the pandemic's going to hurt the hotels and golf courses? Who knows? What we do know though is so far the presidency seems to have boosted the hotel businesses as we saw credit card transactions were substantially up. Donald Trump also has a Seven Springs estate, which is uh, really called like the Trump mansion or Trump retreat. And uh, apparently he agreed not to develop the property, took a $21.1 million charitable tax deduction known as a conservation easement. Basically he said, hey, I'll keep this beautiful building the way it is and I won't turn it into a big hotel, but I want a tax deduction for that, which that does exist and he took $21.1 million as a tax deduction to do that. He also writes off the property taxes on the building as a business write-off, allowing him to get around the state and local tax deduction cap. Uh, this allows him to take more business write-offs, $2.2 million. But the IRS says you have to actually show an actual and honest objective of making profit to be able to write that off, which some people argue that Trump is just using that as his mansion and it's not really designed to be a business property. Now, uh, the, these conservation easements, apparently, that Donald Trump has gotten in the past have represented a total of 119.3 of Donald Trump's total 130 million in charitable giving. So it seems like most of the charitable giving, the New York Times alleges, is from these conservation easements. And with Trump University, Donald Trump settled uh, a $25 million lawsuit. Okay. Well, there you have the complete breakdown of what the heck is going on with Trump's tax returns based on the allegations from the New York Times and whatever data they collected. If you like this breakdown, consider sharing it. If you don't like the information in it, hey, don't take it out on me. I'm just some messenger. And if you like me being a messenger, consider subscribing to the channel. Maybe consider sharing the video. Get your two free stocks with Webull. Get your life insurance. And folks, we'll see you in the next video.